Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of our program. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle. Today we have with us Emily Marquis, who is the founder of Progression Partner, LLC. Welcome to the program, Emily. Hi, thank you for having me. Hey, welcome. So give us a little bit of an idea of what um, your background is and what led you to uh, life coaching and then uh, what your, your uh, firm, Progression Partner, uh, provides to your clients. Sure. So I have a, a corporate background in human resources. I have a business degree and a master's in, in human resources. So I worked about 12 years in the corporate world um, growing and coached people, friends and family outside of uh, the office with their career or people just naturally came to me for um, advice, um, sometimes welcomed or not. And so I decided that that was a path that I wanted to take is really helping pursue um, helping people. Um, I personally uh, had a situation where I've gone through many different personal train changes and needed some help on which uh, direction to take or sometimes deciding which opportunity would be best for me. And so I uh, pursued a coach myself and decided that was what I wanted to do. Um, So, and then I also combined that uh, my certification with life coaching with my human resources background. So I certainly help people uh, specialize in making coaching transition decisions, whether that's how to get to the next level at their current situation or how to change careers altogether and what's in line with their their core values personally to align those. So many people um, are seeking happiness at at work today. Um, So basically, uh, life coaching provides a service of helping people through transitions and whether that's setting goals for um, health, meaning wellness or um, nutrition, fitness, or trying to find their purpose, trying to find career trying to find confidence and self-esteem boosts. Um, So many people who have transitioned, such as even getting married, transition into parenthood, career transitions. um, And I work actually with a lot of people who have kids at the other end of the spectrum. So becoming an empty nester or um, entering retirement and what they want their life to look like and sort of planning their their future. So I... I watch from afar the life coaching industry enough just to see statistics and growth and it's just booming and massive and everything that you mentioned there is um, it makes sense as you say it it makes sense but I think that um, you're probably familiar with the saying um, you don't know what you don't know right right <laughs> so here's my yeah. question since most people don't know what they don't know and you mentioned, oh, transition, you know, from this stage to this stage of your life, and and someone might go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. But I would say that someone in that situation might not realize that, ooh, this is something that I could get clarity, help, you know, you know, expertise on. So my question is, what what is some triggers that someone would be would be able to re- recognize and go, you know what, here's something I should do? Because I think when you're in the midst of the situation, it's so hard to see it because you can't see the forest for the trees. Right, and that's a great question. Um, so there's a different different triggers. Um, if you're feeling stuck per se, like you're just going through the motions every day, you know, you get up. You do your thing and, and you're successful. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing, but you just don't feel right or you feel almost all too familiar with your current situation and you're just kind of treading water. So that's a, uh, um, a trigger that maybe you need a change. Change is good, but not everyone is, is always looking for a change. Um, and another situation might be some health problems. Um, so if you're ignoring uh, maybe the stressors in your life or you're getting headaches all the time, um, 
or you're not sleeping well, that can be a trigger. Well, what's going on in my life? And that can be, you know, either health related or your environment related. You know, are my relationships good? Um, Is my career the way I want it to be? Is my nutrition good? Um, And then another, um, the positive trigger would be you have a few opportunities in front of you. Um, Things keep presenting themselves. Maybe, um, you know, friends from the past are calling you or and you want to get together with them or you have job opportunities that are presenting themselves or you have this great new gym that opened in your in your area, but you want to make time for it. Um, and then finally, the, the fourth trigger is really time management, um, which is really huge this, these days. Um, you know, we all have calendars, but they're full. Um, and really saying, am I filling my time with what I want to these days? They're like, oh, I wish I had more time to do this or I would do this, but I don't have enough time. So one of the biggest things that I can do is really help people manage their time to set their priorities first and tell people and teach people how to say no to really what isn't what's healthy for them. Uh, So those are the big four triggers. Yeah, that's really, uh, really good. And, you know, when you were mentioning opportunities, it made me think of a different one that you might deal with, but maybe people don't realize whatever would ever come up. So goal achievement. So you might think on the front mm-hmm. end, I can help you coach you to achieve goals, right? That's the, the obvious yes. one. But what about mm-hmm. once you've achieved that goal? I would say, and I would say there's a lot of research around this, if you don't have another set of goals that takes you further and past and maybe a little to the right or a little to the left or another level, all of a sudden you might have that deflated or, you know, the, the high and low. And I would say that the coaching is as much needed for after you've achieved that goal as it is to get there in the first place. Exactly. So, uh, the way we look at it is a lot of people set very high goals for themselves, which is great. It's always great to set the bar high. Um, but if you look at it, there can be many, many goals inside there. And sometimes setting um, very large goals is actually what makes some goals unattainable. So if you say, you know, a very broad one is I want to live my life with joy and happiness and purpose. Well, under that, we kind of break down, well, what's preventing you from doing that? And that might be a series of goals. So once you achieve one goal, it's like, okay, that's great. Everything in your life is connected. So if you're eating better or your career is on a good path or you're having good relationships, now what's the next thing that I can tackle to reach my overarching goal of joy and happiness? Is that going to be, you know, relationships or exercise or something? So it's always, um, that's one of the big philosophies in life coaching is that we're all hopefully never going to reach perfection, um, but we're all going to reach being content and we're always going to evolve and learn more um, and adapt to well, everything that's changing around us. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, Tony Robbins teaches the Kanai constant and never ending improvement because no matter what, you should be constantly and always improving. Um, and, and I wrote a book a few years back um, called Believing Your Why, which is about goal mm-hmm. setting and personal development, which is, first of all, you need to have a why anyway behind your goals or else it's just some right. nice idea. If you don't have a real purpose behind that, that um, goal that's pulling you and drawing you, then you're probably not going to achieve it. But then past that, a lot of people have heard that one, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, have a why, you know, Simon Sinek and, and all of these things that you might have heard. But I would say that another huge component, and this is what I talk about in the book, is believing your why. Because you yeah. can say, I want to make a million dollars next year because I want to support mm-hmm. my family better. That's a why. But guess what? If you don't believe that you can make a million dollars next year, it ain't never going to happen. And if you made 47000 and you said a million dollars, the belief level is too broad. But if you made 927000 and you wanted to get to a million, okay, now you probably can believe it because you've, you've got that momentum. So I think that that's a really uh, integral piece as well. Do you find that that self-belief uh, comes into play a lot in your coaching? Oh, 100%. 
um, there's an exercise that I go through and it's and simply um, very similar to, to your book that's called the understanding the why of your goal. Mm-hmm. And we set one goal and it, it can only be um, basically two to three words, very short. Um, and then there's a series of boxes on, on paper that we that I have someone write down. Um, and, and basically the questions are, well, how would you know, what does this mean to you? How would it make you feel? How would it impact your life? And it's actually the same questions asked four times um, to really dig deep. And some people get a little, you know, frustrated at first. They say, well, I know why I want this. Kind of like, I know I want a million dollars or something, but, um, you know, I, I was actually just working with a client the other day who was saying exactly that. He wants a new job because he wants to support his family better. Uh, and we just kept digging and digging and de- digging because he wasn't getting any interviews with a great resume. And we finally whittled it down to is that he didn't really want any of the jobs that he was getting. He just wanted to provide for his family. So we kind of dug down deep and, and um, had him change his direction of, for the different jobs that he was applying for um, because he wanted more than that just to supply uh, for his family, provide for his family. He wanted also to have uh, be in a passionate industry. And so when he found jobs, um, and believed that he could also have financial success and be in, a, in an industry he liked, um, things started coming naturally for him. So, and so believing in that instead of just saying it's the right thing to do. Yeah, you know, I think that, that it kind of, again, comes down to those core beliefs. Um, and, and sometimes mm-hmm. that is so hard to figure out because you're too close to it yourself. Right. And it's very, it's hard for even people in your life. You may go to your spouse or your friends for support, but um, that's, which is great if you have a support system, but at the same time, it's hard because sometimes they might even have, uh, you know, a subliminal uh, stake in your direction. And so really talking with somebody who's completely neutral is going to benefit you the most because it's only empowering you to really uh, speak for yourself. Exactly. So what are your what are your thoughts on when people um when they first come to you, where do you start with them? Because there's probably a, a myriad of places you can start, but you gotta see what's gonna give them the most impact the fastest. Right. So so basically, if I if I could take the opportunity to, to kind of play that with you, um, because many people are still a little bewildered by life coaching. So I start out uh, many the same way, and then go in the direction that uh, that they their answers bring me. So the first thing that I, I ask people is 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 there something that you've been thinking about recently that you really want to start or want to complete, and you don't know how to get there. You mean like a project? Uh, yes, a project or something in your life. Just any kind of personal goal that you may have at this time. Well, um, I guess personally, I would say my fifth book just came out on Amazon, and I'm promoting that, and I need to you know, get as much exposure to that book as possible. So that would be a large goal that I've got. Oh, congratulations. So... Tell me if you could, and if you've reached any goals like this before, or what you could tell me was any strengths that you have that you already uh, possess that could help you reach that goal. Well, I, uh, I, you know, this show here that you know, I'm interviewing you on Business Innovators Radio Network, I've uh, almost hit 150 interviews, and that's a nice milestone. And I've been privileged enough to interview people um, like Tom Hopkins and Jay Bear and Eric Qualman and Peter Shankman and some of these bigger names in the business and, and entrepreneurial and sales world. So I think that some of those networks and connections would lend itself to, you know, help. Uh, help in that kind of uh, promotion. Well, that's great. That's well. It sounds like you already have great success in that. What about some challenges that you would say you're currently experiencing or foresee experiencing in promoting your book? Um, I would say the net result is you do want to work with clients, so you want to feel like you're, um, you know, you're elevated to an uh, elite expert authority, credibility type status, but yet 
uh, approachable to the clients that want to work with you and not feel like, well, I can't ever talk to that person because they know this person. And, you know, that, that's how you sometimes feel about, you know, the Tony Robbins of the world, you know, and, and it is true with him. You know, you can never just pick up the phone and get in touch with him. And, you know, and then you do know that if mm-hmm. you wanted to work with him, the price tag would be, you know, monstrous. So I think that that, that uh, is, cuts both ways. You know, you want to have that um, expert positioning, but at the same time, you want to have that open door, you know, open feel as well. Mm-hmm. Well, great. So if you could just brainstorm maybe three ideas of how you could kind of overcome those challenges or reach your goal and something that you're currently not doing. I don't know. I mean, I, I would just say consistent consistency of communication with really clear messaging. Okay. Um, and is there, have you ever done, it sounds like you've done that much before. Yes. Okay. And now, and now it's just a new topic, right? Okay. So it sounds like you already have a lot of skills is just expanding your, um, your network and kind of reaching those expert people. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah. So as a life coach, what I would help you do is is continue to to brainstorm those opportunities, uh, and we would set goals each week or each month for you to do a new thing to reach your goal. Uh, And then we would basically, you would work towards it, and then if you ever, we would check in, and if you were reaching them, we would then continue to set new goals. Um, But also, if you were not reaching their goals, it would be a fail-safe system. You know, you would not be putting yourself down. We really focus on positive talk um, and building on your strengths. So then we just, if you're not reaching your goals, we just evaluate, well, why not? And then we try to remove the barriers there. You know, is it time? Is it uh, something came up with your family? Or um, is there, you know, something in your within you, your confidence or something that is just not taking you to the next level. And um, we would certain or resources, maybe financial. Um, and then we work through a best way to, to work around those so you could continue to reach your goals. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> you said two things there that were really um, interesting and I know very effective. One, one is the fact that it's that third party, um, you know, outside perspective, meaning you're, you're looking from the outside in. And then secondly is accountability. You know, being able to have mm-hmm. that accountability is just so, so huge. Yes, accountability um, is also a very important success factor towards goals. Um, and that's often why many people don't reach their goals. You know, you know, resolution time is coming up for the New Year's and people always set these big hefty resolutions, but really the only people holding them accountable are themselves. And so that can be one of the biggest reasons why resolutions have a very low success rate because they don't have someone to hold them accountable. Um, And then they just feel bad about it and get in this vicious cycle. So having a coach is kind of like a personal advocate uh, and someone to definitely hold you to to your goals. Yeah. So um, let's wrap up with the final um point of uh, if any listener would like to learn more about you and your uh, life coaching and what is the best way that they can learn more first and then uh, reach out and connect with you. Well, great. Thank you. So my website is www.progressionpartner.com, all singular, and you can check out all my different services on there. You can also uh, reach me at my email, Emily at progressionpartner.com or via phone, 720-862-4756. Um, and I, can, I provide services over the phone or via video to anyone in the United States. Um, and I also teach classes online as well as locally here in Colorado at a meditation center in Evergreen, which is um, very popular. And I have a, a private office where I do uh, in li- live client visits as well. So various means of service, whatever people are accustomed to. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful getting to know you and your practice. 
Thanks, Emily. Yes, thank you so much, Mike, and good luck with your book. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.